Uh, you know, we do have a pharmacist in Congress, a pharmacist by training, and we've got him right now. Republican Congressman Earl Buddy Carter from the beautiful state of Georgia. Sir, very good to have you. Thank you. What do you make of what the president wants to do? Well, first of all, just attacking this problem, I'm proud of the president for doing this. This was one of his campaign promises. He said that we've got to do something about high prescription drug prices, and he's absolutely right. What I've seen and what has been released thus far, he's got four major points that he's talking about. I think he's spot on. Now, admittedly, the, the devil's in the details, so we've got to see exactly what he's talking about, how he's going to uh, deliver on these four topics that, he's, uh, that he has identified. My hope is that he's going to make the, the, the system more transparent. Right now, the drug pricing system is opaque. It needs transparency. We need to know where these rebates are going. I can assure you they're not going to the patient right now. You know, um, we do have a system, though, in our country. It's why a lot of people, even uh, dictators, when they're in their last throes of life, come to the United States because we have the best doctors, the best medicine around. Uh, but all of those guys can afford to get the best type of treatment they can. And I, I wonder if the impetus behind that isn't the fact that we allow companies uh, to charge reflecting all the money they spend on research and development for those drugs. Because they come back and say, take that away or force our prices down. You're also inhibiting our ability to, to, to come up with these life-saving drugs. What do you say? Well, what I've witnessed in my years of practicing pharmacy, the research and development has produced drugs that are just phenomenal. I mean, the, the progress that we've made is nothing short of phenomenal. And I understand the need for research and development, but listen, if you've got a life-saving medication that you can't afford, then what good does it do you? That it's got to be accessible as well. So the pharmaceutical manufacturers have to do a better job of addressing prices. But I'm here to tell you that the main problem, the most immediate, the most significant impact that we can have on prescription drug prices is to have transparency. And is to have transparency within the pharmacy benefit managers, the middlemen that are causing the prices to go up so much. You know, it's also it's an insurance issue too, right? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm disclosing here, a lot of people know this already, but I had progressive MS, multiple sclerosis. And uh, because I have a good plan and, and I, you know, I earn a pretty good buck, I can afford a lot of the therapies that are out there that aren't available to others who are in worse off shape than I am with a lesser type of my disease. That isn't right. That, that, there's something very, very wrong. With that picture. That is not right. And, you know, and I will tell you, that's going to get worse before it gets better because as we get more into precision medicine, that, that is going to limit the pool of patients that you have. Absolutely. Right now, the pharmaceutical manufacturers are concentrating on specialty drugs. And, and again, those drugs are used for a specific population, and the price can't be spread out among a lot of people like it can with, say, a cholesterol drug. So what if the company, Sarah, I can gouge a Neil Cavuto, but I, I, I can't gouge a Joe Smith? Uh, if that's the way the system is going, and increasingly I see for myself that it is, the president's right to want to correct that. Uh, is he going to go too far, though, where the, the life-saving or improving therapies that are out there actually a compromise for the rich and the non-rich alike? Well, you bring up a good point. I mean, we in Congress, we in government, we don't, re we, we don't have a tendency to overreact. We do overreact. We, we swing that pendulum too far the other way. And that's a fear that I have. We can't Well, do you think drug companies, incentive. Congressman, and, and you, you know far better than anyone as a, as a licensed pharmacist, do gouge people, that they, 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 they gouge them? Well, you know, that's a pretty strong word, but, um, you know, if, if I'm having to pay half of my salary on a drug that's saving my life, then I'm probably going to use that word. You're right. So if the president is saying uh, or wants to set a, a fixed level for some drugs, uh, that isn't much better than a lot of socialist countries. And the flip side of that is then you worry about the quality of care down the road in this country. So what is the balance here? 
Well, the balance is difficult, but it is there and it can be done. We've got to have cooperation. This is, there's not one simple answer to this. It's got to be a team effort. I applaud what the president and the executive branch are doing. We need to help him in Congress, and I'm working to do just that. I've got a number of pieces of legislation. For instance, right now, I've got a piece of legislation that addresses the gag clause. Did you know that your pharmacist cannot tell you that if you pay f cash for a medication, that it'd be cheaper than your insurance plan? How ridiculous wow. is that? Yeah, how ridiculous is that? There are plans out there that will, if a pharmacist offers to you that you can pay cash and, and it's cheaper than your copay, they'll either be kicked out of the plan or penalized by the plan. Now, I've got legislation that'll end that ludicrous plan. Well, that plan alone is brilliant. That, that, that strategy alone is one of the, the things that obviously doesn't, you don't have to move heaven and earth for that. Um, Congressman, thank you very, very much. Thank you.